As the discussion surrounding trends and the evolving world of fashion grows, I think it's important to discuss an era that's been wildly popular over the past several years, early 2000s fashion, also known as Y2K fashion. Some popular Y2K trends you might be familiar with include low-rise jeans, tube tops, track suits, and the visible thong or whale tail trend. You might notice a common theme among the people who typically wear these trends. They're usually thin. Now, let's rewind a little bit for some context into what beauty standards, specifically the ideal body types, looked like throughout history. As a lot of us may know, chubby stomachs and plumper bodies were considered a symbol of youth, beauty, and wealth during the Italian Renaissance, famously depicted by artists such as Peter Paul Rubens. But why did this change? From the era of the corset in Victorian England to the golden age of Hollywood, what was considered beautiful and in fashion changed drastically. While Victorian fashion favored corsets, bonnets, bustles, and petticoats, the 1930s through 1950s adopted a much different approach to style. The 1930s consisted of midi-length bias-cut dresses, large collars, and puff sleeves. Women in the 1950s typically wore T-length swing dresses with petticoats, sheath dresses, garments that cinched in at the waist, capri pants, cardigan sets, and Peter Pan collar blouses. I'm sure most of us remember seeing somewhere that Marilyn Monroe was considered a sex symbol because of her curvier body type, which strayed from the body types that were typically seen as favorable. This can be attributed to the post-World War II era where femininity, women's in particular, and traditional gender roles were important above all else. Actresses and models like Marilyn Monroe, Betty Page, Sophia Loren, and Elizabeth Taylor are often credited as being the reason curves came back into style in the 1950s. However, I do want to note that none of these women were fat or plus size by any means. The type of curves that were acceptable then are very similar to the curves that are seen as acceptable now, thin women with bigger boobs and wider hips. Therefore, fat women were still left out of the conversation when it came to any sort of representation in media, yet alone when it came to fashion. It's also extremely important to note that fat phobia is rooted in racism and mostly exists as it does today because white colonists pushed the idea that black people were inherently fat because they quote-unquote lack self-control which highlighted the adoption of fat phobia as a means of perpetuating even more racism. As mentioned by Sabrina Strings, author of Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia, therefore, they decided to rearticulate racial categories, adding new characteristics, and one of the things that the colonists believed was that black people were inherently more sensuous, that people love sex and they love food, and so the idea was that black people had more venereal diseases and that black people were inherently obese because they lack self-control. And of course, self-control and rationality after the Enlightenment were characteristics that were deemed integral to whiteness. If you'd like to learn more about this history, then I absolutely recommend Sabrina's book, and I'll put a link to her book in the description below. Flash forward to the 1980s, where the heroin chic trend emerges. Heroin chic was a popular style in the early 1990s and most notably included being very thin, having pale skin, dark circles underneath the eyes, messy hair, and strong angular bone structure. It's been said that heroin chic partially began as a reaction against the healthy and glowy look of popular 1980s models such as Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schiffer. Another reason was the beginning of the opioid epidemic in the United States. The use of heroin was on the rise, which was depicted in movies like The Basketball Diaries, Train Spotting, and Pulp Fiction. The model who's credited with being the origin of this trend, Gia Karanji, passed away at the age of 26 and struggled for years with addiction. In fact, a lot of the models that were the face of this look, including Kate Moss and Jamie King, have also dealt with addiction. Creating an entire fashion trend or look surrounding drug addiction is obviously very horrible and exploitative, especially considering that it was mostly poor people and people of color experiencing the horrible and devastating effects of the opioid crisis. 
Nevertheless, this emaciated look was the basis of Calvin Klein's 1993 campaign for his perfume, Obsession, which featured Kate Moss. After the tragic and untimely death of prominent fashion photographer David Sorrenti in 1997, the heroin chic trend began to fade. While the overt glamorization of addiction had finally begun to go away, fat phobia, unfortunately, did not. While the gaunt, emaciated look of the 1990s was out, the popularity of slim, athletic body types increased. In 1999, Vogue named Giselle Bündchen, I apologize if I pronounced her name wrong, as the return of the sexy model, and Rolling Stone named her the most beautiful girl in the world. Therefore, we can clearly see a common trend amongst beauty standards during this time, and even now. Going back to popular Y2K trends such as low-rise jeans, tracksuits, and the whale tail trend. First of all, it's extremely important to note that Y2K fashion is rooted in black culture, from Michael Jackson's Scream music video to Lil' Kim's fashion and Dapper Dan's creation of Logomania. As mentioned by Akruri Ganeshan, again, I apologize for any mispronunciations, before Britney Spears or Paris Hilton wore Juicy Couture tracksuits, Missy Elliott and salt and Peppa wore athletic sets. The clothing brand Baby Fat was created by Kimora Lee Simmons, heavily contributing to the velour tracksuit trend with celebrities like Alicia Keys and Megan Good wearing these tracksuits. This is something that's often overlooked when discussing the Y2K era, but it's important to give credit where credit is due. As I'm sure a lot of us are aware of, or if you're not, then you're about to, the 2000s consisted of immense body shaming and fat phobia. It was so warped that actresses like Raven Simone and Hilary Duff were often considered fat or chubby. Lest we forget the infamous That's So Raven episode where Raven's told she's too big to model. This girl does not have the look! The look! Who says that's the only look? You make people feel bad if they don't look like that. No one looks like that! I don't even look like that. Although anybody above a size 2 seemed to be demonized and relentlessly body shamed, Fat people were blatantly and purposely neglected and ignored. As Reina Esparza wrote, The 2000s was a time when being fat was the worst thing someone could be, and having a skinny body was the ultimate accessory for any outfit. Though that may seem harsh to say, it was fairly obvious when pop stars and celebrities of the time were treated as style icons because of wearing certain outfits that accentuated their bare, flat stomachs. Meanwhile, a person wearing the same thing who did not have a small body, was torn down by tabloids and other media. Why else were the most popular looks of the time emphasizing flat stomachs and skinny waists? Cute and on-trend clothing options for plus-size people in the early 2000s were virtually non-existent, which essentially excluded fat people from fashion. Signed a very sad nine-year-old because I was forced to shop at Avenue with my mom in the 2000s. Although more plus-size clothing options exist today, they're often limited when it comes to providing cute options above a size 2 or 3X, and also in quality. Even if fat people do participate in early 2000s fashion, the reactions to these outfits are very different. While low-rise jeans and tracksuits are seen as trendy and fashionable on thinner people, they're typically seen as lazy or unflattering on plus-size people. A tweet I often think about is from at RainFQ. In order to truly understand and appreciate fashion, it's important to view it through a critical lens. Y2K fashion trends are cute, but understanding the background and era in which they flourished is crucial. The early 2000s heavily focused on weight, particularly losing it, and diet culture, which has unquestionably influenced our culture and way of thinking today. Celebrities like Paris Hilton were viewed as having the ideal body type, and anybody that weighed more than that ideal type was incessantly and horribly body shamed. Actresses and singers like Alicia Silverstone, Jessica Simpson, and Kelly Clarkson were severely body shamed for being too big, even though they were thin. I don't know about you, but I personally remember being made to think America Ferreira was the fat friend in Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Or as TikTok user Rosie Beam pointed out, even Kate Winslet. There was a time in Hollywood when this woman was laughed at in casting rooms and referred to as Kate weighs a lot. And compared to the heroin chic models and actresses at the time, Kate was noticeably larger than what was popular. 
Joan Rivers even said that they both could have fit on that raft if Kate was five pounds lighter. The overt and blatant fat phobia towards people who were quite literally thin obviously left very little representation of people who were actually fat. Honestly, the only popular plus-size celebrities I can personally think of during the early 2000s are Queen Latifah, Melissa McCarthy, and Monique. It was so bad that I vividly remember thinking any actress with a round face was fat and thus felt slightly represented by them. Like Ty and Clueless, even though Brittany Murphy was obviously not plus-size at all. And because of this lack of true representation, Fashion trends centered thin people, plus-size fashion options barely existed, and apparently fat people didn't exist either, or at least fat people have been treated that way. And although this has improved slightly, fat phobia still exists and pervades fashion, life, the media, you name it, and fashion trends still center thin people. Although this leans more towards high fashion, Fashion designers like Karl Lagerfeld have famously refused to dress plus-size women. Even being gross and horrible enough to say, you've got fat mothers with their bags of chips sitting in front of the television and saying that thin models are ugly. The world of beautiful clothing is about dreams and illusions. And to this day, a bunch of plus-size celebrities have called out designers for refusing to dress them. Which given the history and reputation of the fashion industry, isn't very surprising, but it's disappointing nonetheless. Fat phobia throughout society in general, but especially the fashion industry, is the reason so many thin people are considered plus size to begin with, like Curve Models, Iskra Lawrence, and Brie Warren. Both of these people are beautiful, and the issue doesn't necessarily lie with them specifically, but rather a fashion industry that labels thin people as curve models and refuses to genuinely acknowledge that fat people, beyond the size 12s of the world, exist. I'm not saying you can't participate in early 2000s fashion or wear what you want. In fact, I've been known to partake in a lower rise jean look or two before. I just think it's important to be critical of the fashion trends we consume and recognize the origins of these trends. Next time you see a Pinterest photo of someone in a velour tracksuit or low-rise jeans, think about what in particular you truly think is trendy in those photos, and if you'd still like them if someone who's a larger size were wearing them. Wear the style you like, but also challenge your fat phobia and think about how this fat phobia pervades fashion. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye!